This tutorial is brought to you by one of the authors of Revising Professional Writing, now in its third edition. My students call me Dr. Kim. The publishers made this video available under a Creative Commons license. For more information, contact parlaypress.com. Remember, you can use the pause button at any time, and if you see shadows or something weird on the screen, try changing your playback quality settings. Well, the view you see here includes everything you might learn about professional writing in my tutorials. There are others that help you understand content development, organization, style, and mechanics as well as the rhetorical context that determines which content, organization, or style is going to be effective in a specific situation. Although your primary interest in this tutorial is the message itself, effective organization can only be judged by taking into account the writer's purpose and audience, in other words, the rhetorical context. If you haven't listened to the tutorials on audience and purpose yet, I recommend them to you. All right, this tutorial focuses on one area of organization in professional writing, transitions. No doubt you've heard about this topic before, but my goal here is to get you to think about transitions impact in your own workplace writing. We'll consider the organization of an executive summary for a report which was written by a planning consultant hired by a U.S. city. They were determining future fees for land development. The quality in the video makes it impossible for you to read the executive summary on the screen. If you're a student using our book, your instructor should have a copy, or you can always download one at proserite.com. The audience for this report is the group of leaders in city government. Only a few of them are experts on planning, and even those few will be slightly skeptical of or sensitive to the writer's recommendations. After all, it's the obligation of the readers to safeguard the interests of the city and its residents. Plus, each of the readers may also have his or her own ideas about what's best. All of this means the writer has to develop both informative and persuasive content to increase the reader's readiness to accept the message in the report. In this tutorial, I'll explain the six types of relations, as well as their three grammatical classes, that are conveyed with transitions. Hopefully, along the way, I'll convince you that organizing successfully with transitions matters in the executive summary for that report. All right, the first type of relation that can be shown by transitions is cause and effect. Look at the passage from the executive summary of the planning consultant's report. Tell me what you think the relation is between the ideas expressed in the two sentences. Most of us will probably agree the relation is cause and effect. The cause is expressed in the first sentence and the effect expressed in the second. The writer could make the message more effective and efficient by inserting a transition like thus. The use of transitions improves effectiveness because the reader is much less likely to be confused about the meaning intended by the writer when the writer makes that meaning explicit. In addition, the use of transitions improves efficiency. That's because the reader doesn't have to think as long about what the writer's logic is. Let's try another one. The second type of relation that can be shown by transitions is illustrating. Look at another passage from the executive summary. What's the relation between the ideas expressed in the two sentences here? The second sentence illustrates the meaning of the first. That means this would be more clear if a transition like specifically were used. If you find that you see a relationship that's different from the one that I'm talking about in this tutorial, that's the perfect piece of evidence that should convince you how important transitions are. With the transition here, you know what the relationship is. Without it, you and I might disagree. All right, let's try the third type of relation, which is comparing. Look at yet another passage from the executive summary. What's the relation between the ideas expressed here? Well, the second sentence is supposed to provide similar information. That would be clearer with a transition like similarly. The fourth type of relation is called contrasting. So look at this passage. Tell me what the relation is between the ideas expressed in the sentences. In this case, the second sentence provides dissimilar information to the first. So in this case, a transition like in contrast would make that clear. 
Now the fifth type of relation that can be shown by transitions is chronological. Look at another passage. What's the relation here? The meaning of the first sentence is illustrated chronologically with the second and third sentences. This would be made more clear with transitions like first and second, and that's what you see in the revised version here. The sixth type of relation that can be shown is adding. Look at another passage and figure out what the relation between the ideas is. This time the second sentence simply adds information to the first. This could be made more clear with a transition like in addition. It's important to note that adding is the default relation. I mean, hopefully the reader perceives each sentence in a document as adding information to the previous one. This means that transitions that signify the adding relation are relatively less useful to readers than those that signify any of the other five relations, but they can still be used effectively. Now I'll move on to discussing the three classes of transitions that can be used to signify the relationships that we've already discussed. Again, we're going to look at examples from the executive summary for a planning consultant's report to demonstrate how you differentiate among these classes. Look at the table, consider how the three classes of transitions might be used to signify the cause-effect relation in this passage from the planning report. The first possibility is using a coordinating conjunction like so between two independent clauses. This results in combining the two individual sentences into one. The second possibility is using a conjunctive adverb like therefore. Conjunctive adverbs are somewhat flexible in terms of where they can be placed in the second sentence, but their use always maintains the two sentences as distinct or independent. In this specific example, therefore appears after the subject slot. Note that it's surrounded by commas. The third possibility is using a subordinating conjunction like because to create a subordinate clause. This results in combining the two individual sentences into one, but unlike coordinating conjunctions, subordinating ones create a clause that's subordinate to the main clause. So note that there's a comma signaling the end of the subordinate clause headed by because. Let's try one more example. Consider how three classes of transitions might be used to signify the contrasting relation. The first possibility is using a coordinating conjunction like but between the two independent clauses. Note again this results in combining the two individual sentences into one complex sentence. Second possibility using a conjunctive adverb like however. As I noted on the previous slide, conjunctive adverbs are flexible in terms of where they can be placed. In the example you see here, it appears before the subject slot in sentence initial position, followed by a comma. The third possibility is using a subordinating conjunction like although, which creates a subordinate clause. This results in combining the two individual sentences into one and separating the subordinate clause with a comma. All right, now that you have a better understanding of transitions, let's check that understanding by revising a pair of sentences you haven't seen before. The question asks that you identify the relation between them and make that relation explicit by adding a subordinating conjunction, so you have to choose the right kind of transition. All right, you should recognize the idea in the second sentence, I'm a good candidate is the result of the idea expressed in the first sentence. I have experience working in, etc. That means the relation would be described as cause-effect. One subordinating conjunction that signals cause-effect is since. So if you see the revised version here, it could be inserted at the beginning of the first sentence to make this relation clear. The three classes of transitions that are used to signify six types of relations have been discussed by referring to an executive summary for a planning consultant's report. Revising to include transitions increases both the effectiveness and the efficiency with which readers get a message by making the relation between ideas explicit. Recall what it says at the end of the RPW chapter, if you have a copy of the book, about the importance of road signs at intersections. I quote, as the writer, you may think the direction is obvious without a signal, but remember that you've traveled the train several times before while thinking about drafting your document. The reader, in contrast, is making the trip for the first time." End quote. 
transition signal relations between sentences. But in a long or complex document, relations between ideas can be signaled between entire sections of the document, like when a writer includes a preview or map of the structure of the entire document. The revised version of the executive summary now has a sentence previewing the methodology section of the report. The revisions also included adding transitions to make it less likely readers will get lost on their trip through this document. At this point you may be thinking that transitions don't seem all that important. I mean, readers can figure out the relation between ideas and a document on their own. If you've listened to any of my other tutorials, you know my position is that workplace readers may be able, but they might also be unwilling to figure out those relationships. When you use transitions and maps, even readers who have limited motivation to read your document will get the meaning you intend with minimum effort. Good organization ensures both effectiveness and efficiency. Remember that being able to apply the ideas in this tutorial when you read and analyze new texts is a prerequisite to using them effectively in your own workplace documents.